I like that the movie can have little moments of lighthearted brevity like this before going it's, into the creepy shit that happens in 45 seconds. Oh, it's a full package. One of the reasons why it's kind of easy to point to Lord of the Rings, like this trilogy is, what what's a good way of like introducing films to somebody who's never seen a film before, however that manages <laughs> to happen. Lord of the Rings is like a really easy choice because it's so, it's so balanced, isn't it? A shortcut. A shortcut to what? The mushrooms. On the one hand, absolutely. On the other, maybe don't show them this yet, because it'll spoil the, the other films. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> set their expectations too high. It's like, oh man, this was so great. What, what other Lord of the Rings things can I watch? Having watched this in some of my most formative years, the assumption at the time was that film is incredible, imagine where we'll go. Mm. And then it, it sort of became like, that was great. Let's watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which isn't so bad. I mean, we talk about oh. how we're in one of the insanest and unluckiest timelines ever for, you know, the amount of franchises that have been burned down. But we lucked out huge with this set of movies. The other timelines yeah. don't get to have this. Well, we at least got to see how good they can be. And like, there's people who are growing up now who are going to assume that that's the standard of movie making, like the garbage that we have to put up with today. Looking at each other last time before they it depart. But... Again, like the Lord of the Rings is a good uh, story to point to in terms of, I guess, um, excellent execution of, I guess, more archetypal like storytelling elements. <laughs> Like a team brought together with all of their disparate skills, growing over the course of the adventure, learning to trust each other, learning from each other. It's like such a, you know, normal kind of thing to see well, yeah, in a story. In a more, really to get well. like slightly meta then, it's like you wish these movies worked as a blueprint for everyone else to build off of instead of just coming back to it all the time being like, why can't they do it like this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why can't they just achieve something that should be normal. You tried to lead them over Garadras, and if that fails, where then will you go? Part of this makes me wonder, you know the people who like, gobble up stuff like Ahsoka, or whatever have you, and they legitimately believe there's strong storytelling in it. It's like, if you were to then make them watch something like Lord of the Rings, would they die of like, an overload of quality? If the mountain defeats you, will you risk a more dangerous road? <laughs> it does actually make me wonder if they would even appreciate it. Yeah. If they would recognize what they're seeing, or would they just see it as being on the same level as a song? Probably, yeah. Would they just be like, yeah, they're both really good. There is a fell voice on the air. Someone did a Star Wars tier list of all the shows and oh, movies. No. And they had they oh. had Andor up at the very top, but it was right next to like Revenge of the Sith, Mandalorian season one, and Ahsoka was right below it. Oh. And uh, like I just like I don't fucking understand. A new hope was on the same level as Ahsoka was. Oh, it wasn't even Jesus. The top I know, no, it's just, fucking crazy. You know, I, stand up! We must turn back! Go! When you give it time, is anybody going to rem remember Ahsoka compared to, yeah. you know, I mean, 20 years later, Lord of the They're Rings in Gors. Look at this. Yeah. That's what we call fucking epic. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even need to shoot a sky laser. There's an old man yelling, <laughs> and it's wonderful. Yep. Dwarf doors are invisible when closed. Masters cannot find them if their secrets are forgotten. Why doesn't that surprise me? There was, a, there was a year between the releases for these films, right? Yes. yes. Can you imagine the yeah. fucking pain if they had made it three years between each one? Oh, fuck off. Speak, friend. And enter. Melon. 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 What are you going to do then? Knock your head against these doors, Peregrine Took, and if that does not shatter them, and I am allowed a little peace from foolish questions. Because I never had to live it, but the gap between Empire Return of the Jedi, three years? <laughs> it was brutal, yeah. especially when you were like 10, you know? <laughs> do not disturb. I saw it. Well, I saw Star Wars when I was seven. And I was ten when I saw Empire. Man, now that would be formative. I say that as if I didn't watch them around about the same age as well. Yeah, I would have watched them all at once. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we had to wait. But I had and, to wait for Lord of the Rings. Uh, I joined you in the wait for that one. Speak, friend, and enter. Melon. 
Do you imagine him obsess- like obsessing over that movie as much as I do now, or for Lord of the Rings with no internet. Dude, we would all the- okay. If imagine these came out today, it would never happen. But if they did, and we knew that we had to wait three years for Two Towers, we would all die. It would be insane. That would be pretty yeah, tough. It would, it would be. Well, the end of Empire. Yeah, that was, it was like three years. What? <laughs> Soon, Master Elf, you will enjoy the fabled hospitality of the dwarves. We read a lot of Starlog magazine and Bantha Tracks, which was the newsletter from the Star Wars fan club. Yeah, I guess it's like um, it wasn't it's half and half, because if we did have the situation we have now, but back then, it'd be, you can share your pain of waiting with everyone else, so. Roaring fires, malt beer, red meat off the bone. I mean, you'd understand the pain of uh, waiting for season two of uh, Rings of Power, you know? To be fair, we were just <laughs> dreading it. I think Gary is very much invested in that coming out sooner <laughs> rather than later. <laughs> let's I go, hate. season two. Let's, let's fucking go. The cultural impact of the Lord of the Rings trilogy is nothing short of phenomenal. Rings of Power, I don't know that how many people who loved it remember what happened in it. You bring great Evil here, Ring Baron. The dwarf breathed so loud we could have shot him in the dark. Mm. Gandalf's death was not in vain, nor would he have you give up hope. The enemy knows you have entered here. Hey, look, it's Caliborn. 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 No, yeah. it's Caliporno. Hey, Caliborno. Caliborno. <laughs> it's Caliborno. Just, Just as a thought silly... experiment. He was taken by both shadow and flame. A Balrog of Morgoth. When I say Return of the King, what is the first like imagery that comes to mind for you guys? Ooh, oh, Aragorn's oh. coronation. Interesting. I, Ride of the Rohirrim. That's yeah. yeah so, that was what I was. For me, what comes to my mind first. So. It, genuinely, it's, it's like a um, flickering in my head between that and uh, when Aragorn leads everybody at the Black Gate. It's those two. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. full of amazing scenes. It's full I of also, amazing I, scenes. For we went needlessly into the net of Moria. Needless were none of the deeds of Gandalf in life. I feel like terrible. all four and a half hours of that movie flashed within a couple seconds in my mind. <laughs> just right? all oh, yeah. Yeah. The lighting of the beacons, love that. Oh, oh that scene where the Witch King of Angmar uh, lands on like the... Oh god, it's of, so um, cool. Of Mias Morgul. <laughs> and then like the, the sky beam lights off and then it like screams like I love that part. The best sky beam yeah. in yeah. the history of cinema. Do not let the great emptiness of Khazad Doom fill your heart, Gimli, son of Gloin. We're about two towers. I have a feeling everyone has the same answer, maybe. Yeah, know. yeah. Is it Helm's Deep? Yeah. Helm's Deep yeah, related? <laughs> charge oh, of well, the, it's the, it's really not, no. the one thing that like sticks with me more than anything else is Sam's speech at the end of that movie. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. good. I, don't, I think for me, it's the visual of uh, all of the ladders, you know, raising above the uh, oh, that yeah. sweeping shot of all of also, the ladders raising up onto the uh the wall love is now mingled with grief i don't think it counts as helm's deep exactly but i often think about the the shot of saruman basically march to helm's deep that that part march to helm's deep leave none alive the quest stands upon the edge of a knife Stray but a little and it will fail. I was thinking of that part where, you know, the, the sweeping music comes in. We see Saruman at his tower, like, kind of like saying, oh, fuck, everything's fucked up. I don't I, even I think uh, it's it, for me. It's uh, when Theoden and Aragorn ride out. Fell deeds awake. Now for wrath, now for ruin and the red dawn. Like when all seems lost and he just yeah. gives that amazing speech, fuck like yeah. fell deeds awake. Now for wrath, now for ruin. Hell yeah. Yet hope remains while the company is true. Or or when he's dressing up, you know, and you know, the <laughs> days have got down in the West. The days have gone down in the West, behind the hills, into shadow. Oh God, that well, speech is particularly poignant. This? She yeah. said to me, even now, there is hope left. But I cannot see it. By the way, I could ask the same question for Fellowship, but I feel like it's difficult at this point because we've just, we've literally just watched it. <laughs> it's like, well, it's just everything at this well, point. Well, I mean, I think the Council of Elrond and Moria There's definitely are the two that. that come to my mind first. I would see the glory of Gondor restored. White Tower of Ecthalion. Glimmering like a spike of pearl and silver. Breaking of the Fellowship. That's breaking of the Fellowship for me. Yeah. Like that whole last scene is just like one of the best scenes in any movie I've seen ever. Dude, that that's another it... masterclass on cliffhanger slash end of story. Yep. They managed yeah. to nail it. One day, 
Our paths will lead us there. The lords of Gondor have returned. But Moria, like all of Moria, establishing the Shire, like... Mm -hmm. I'm on hen. Hard to pick. It's, uh, just, on that particular crane really shot in cool on hen is so yeah, fucking good. Yeah, with all of the yeah. Carrying you from Aragorn and Legolas over to Boromir. Will you look into the mirror? What will I see? Even the wisest cannot tell. A lot of my memories of this movie, like when I think about it, is like whatever scene is attached to whatever my favorite songs from the soundtrack are. They did not hang on that for very long, but super important detail. The fellowship has failed. What if we hold true to each other? I appreciate the fact that it doesn't treat us like we're stupid. And oh god, yeah, so. dude, yeah. that... We will not abandon Merry and Pippin to torment and death. That's another thing that's been taken for granted, I think, is not being treated like a fucking baby in media. I don't even associate that with Lord of the Rings, but you rewatch them and you're like, oh yeah, of course they treated me like an adult. That is handsome, Orc. I mean, nowadays you have, you know, children writing, so they, you know, think the audiences are children too. An intelligent person writing maybe has a bit more confidence in their audience. You could have seen it from way further yeah, back than that. <laughs> Uh, they weren't looking in the right direction. Ha ha ha, that's like four miles away. Ha ha ha, let's go around. <laughs> Whatever horde killing game you have, putting the Helm's Deep map in there is always a good idea. Bloons Tower Defense, but it's Helm's Deep. <laughs> Someone made a really good Helm's Deep in Halo Infinite's Forge. Did they? Yeah, yeah it's, funny like, though, well, it's like one to one. Like the newest game that comes out that has the capacity to make a Helm's Deep map, it'll happen. Like that's the legacy. It's just constant cultural influence. You. It's interesting to think about, especially because of how much we're aware now of um, box office openings. But I'm pretty sure this broke the record, right, Return of the King? It was massively, massively successful. Nearly 250 million. Because I each went up and up and up, and like, Fellowship of the Ring already made a lot of money. But yeah, it just kept growing. Oh god, the hype for this was building. insane. Yeah. I think this was, at the time of its release, it beat out Phantom Menace as the second highest grossing film, like, of all time. Yeah, yeah. the difference is that this is a good movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> this uh, this doesn't even have Jar Jar in it. Listen, the prequels I mean, walked so that the sequels could get flushed out of toilet all right well if disney gets a hold of the remake it'll be the first trilogy or it'll be the first film project to cost a trillion dollars <laughs> i'm kind of what a perfect spooky forest they would yes. put everything they have left on it and then it makes like one yep. dollar <laughs> didn't this win all of its nominations a... I think it might have gotten the most wins out of, like, any film at the Academy Awards. Twelve, I believe. Good. That is correct. No acting. Yeah, uh, it is... is a crime. That would be a crime, yeah. Tonight, we remember those who gave their blood to defend this country. Everybody looks like they're having... Yeah, I want to go to this Yeah, party. so, Return of the King is tied with Ben-Hur and Titanic for the most uh, Academy Award wins, with eleven. Not bad. And it won everything that it was nominated for. Damn. To make Look at him go. Look at him go. Hail the victorious dead. Hail! Lord of the Rings as a trilogy is the most nominated film franchise for Academy Awards. It surpassed Godfather and Star Wars, which had 29 and 21. Which is, as a uh, total franchise, you mean? So when yeah, you as, well, as a together. trilogy specifically. Yeah, I guess I can believe that. It just, it would make sense that it would come close to them. Remember the special edition DVDs they sold where you got like a, a golem statue and then you got the Minas Tirith. Uh, it, it opens up and you can like store things in it. It's really freaking nice. cool. Back when they did fun stuff with A perfect DVDs. place to keep your long bottom leaf. Yes. Yeah, you could stash your weed. Leaf app does not condone the use of long bottom leaf. <laughs> No. I fully condone the use of say, yeah, we do. Leaf. Damn. I'm all about that salted pork. Short bottom, mid bottom, and long bottom are all approved. I like round bottom myself. When the shadow of Mordor reaches this city, it will begin. That's a game. It is. That's a game that you that has really the biggest fan of. <laughs> uh, well, I like the gameplay a lot. I just think it has like one of the worst stories I've ever seen in a video uh -huh. game. It's pretty yeah. bad. But yes, it does have fun gameplay. Fun gameplay that they decided to make sure that no one else could ever replicate. 
Pretty much I'm familiar with some of these scenes because I saw them so many times in the games afterward. Like they would play these clips and they'd be like, and now you get to be a part of it. Well, yeah, that was what they did a lot with the movie license games back in the day. It's like, oh, movie, all right, and then cut to gameplay. All right, back to movie. The Lord of the Rings ones, they would create the in-game versions of all of this and sync them. It's kind of like crazy to think about. Yeah, like an odd amount of hard work going. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely of a time gone by. We, uh, we, we don't do that no do. more. Which I guess makes sense because of the whole you stand to spoil your movie, uh, especially if the game gets released ahead of time, which it often does. I mean, I assume it stopped as well because it just wasn't profitable enough. Yeah, they, I mean, they had a reputation, didn't they? Which is unfortunate because it's like, there shouldn't be anything stopping you from making a really fun, awesome game, but you keep making shitty ones. I say that as if the fucking Marvel's, Marvel Avengers intertwined Avengers thing was game, any yeah. like better or something. It's like, no. It's so interesting because Lord of the Rings feels like essentially what people think of when they think of fantasy, and yeah. yet it still managed to retain a very distinctive identity, even in the face of a lot of a other- A fantasy movie had, like, there have been fantasy movies, there have been good ones, but it really hadn't pulled- no fantasy movie had pulled off mass appeal. Like, no, I would argue like, part of the problem, possibly, is the Lord of the Rings made it feel like it was too easy or something. Like, do we need maybe. to care about any of this shit? We just get the people to do the things and whatever, and it's like, no, you don't well, understand. So Peter much Jackson's fucking work went into this. I offer you my service, Theoden King. And gladly, I accept it. This isn't a fantasy, this is history. We're gonna treat this like we're making a history. Yeah, I'm an Esquire, thing. yeah! Well, maybe, maybe like the mistaken belief that this was a sure thing, that like the Lord of the Rings being both really great and really successful was a sure thing rather than the product of a lot of hard work and a risk. Even yeah. though, you know, Lord of the Rings is incredibly well known even before the films came out. We have to concede there's lightning in a bottle of like the right creators and the right people in the right time and the right place. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> A lot of the greatest films oh. of all time will have production stories that, like, everything is done by the skin of their teeth, and the right people it were known at the right time, people were free to do a thing when otherwise weren't. And that it was almost, like, miraculous that it came together at the end, that for a long time they weren't sure if what they were making was great. Raiders of Rohan! Oaths you have taken! Now, fulfill them all! Yeah, I think, um, Scarlett Johansson said that she thought Avengers, Avengers. was gonna be silly yeah. until they did the Avengers shot, and then she was like, oh shit, this is gonna be huge. <laughs> But yes, this feels like dragging us back down after we got uplifted there for a yeah. while. It was a reminder of why we need Rohan now. We can't hold them! The city is lost! Can you fucking imagine the audacity to try and remake these someday? <laughs> oh, they'll have but it. They will, though. It's so rude an, uh, to even think. Oh, says shit. That they need uh, to uh, the uh, I'm uh, just yeah. gonna let you guys know that if these movies are ever gonna be remade, you're gonna find in the news that I became a terrorist. <laughs> Cinematic terrorists. They might be good. No, they won't. You I don't, I don't feel like. I just don't feel like we'd be at the timeline where we would uh, wait out twice it, with a Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a willingness to actually have uh, respect for Tolkien, which nobody in Hollywood has. Well, to be fair, uh, his work just doesn't work for a modern audience. No, it doesn't. Nobody really watches Lord of the Rings these days. How could you be an actor in these movies and then like come away thinking, yeah, anything I make will be even remotely this good? That's kind of an interesting like, thought, is that the idea but, of knowing this is the best thing that you'll ever make or be a part of. Yeah, it's like if this was, if I was in this project, I'd be like, you know what? I just never gonna do anything again. I, I peaked. I'll never do these anything again. Do that right after they're done with the thing that they just realized they're the most known for, like David Duchovny with with the X Files. They go off and do their thing. They act a little bitter, but a lot of them, like when they get older, learn to appreciate. Hey, at least I was in something memorable. Yeah, you know, Mary was. Uh, Dominic, what's his name? Dominic Monaghan. Uh, he was in All of Lost, and then yeah, he made it into Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, for like fucking why? five right. seconds. Oh my god, I completely like, like he watched. was in the greatest trilogy of movies ever, and then he was like, "What if I was in one of the worst movies ever made?" What about the whole girl maneuver? <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's some real damage. Oh my god, it's so bad. <laughs> Come on, that movie's one in a billion. <laughs> I didn't realize that an Osgol fucking fell off. That's the first <laughs> time I ever saw it. Before, I was like, whoa! It, how did I watch these a million times and not notice that? Well, it's like the, the Legolas thing. Is I never noticed the Mumakill tried to use its trunk to hit Legolas off the tusk. I never noticed that before. Oh my god, 20 years of watching these movies and I'm still finding new awesome shit about them. I need to go to New Zealand. I need to see all this shit. Oh yeah, I imagine they'd preserve the hell out of all of this. 
as for as long as I can. It's a big part of their national identity. Yeah. <laughs> like, it actually is. And it's, like, attached to three incredible movies that everyone in the world loves. And it's like, yeah, New Zealand made that possible. I mean, you've got good reason to be proud of, of this. As, Absolutely. As a especially with how much of it is is just tied to oh, New Zealand. The, the amount of tourism th these movies have brought in oh, so it's a lot insane. of people didn't know New Zealand like it, existed. It, it, they, they, they knew it existed, but it was just... It, yeah. It's pretty far away from the states, but there's a lot of Americans who go there. Oh, now. It's, it's I mean, geez, I learned about New Zealand, and I'm like, fuck, yeah. I didn't even know there was an old Zealand. Unreal, yeah. though, that you have all of this incredible cultural impact from movies that are incredibly well made, and all this stuff. It's all recorded. Everyone knows how they got made and who by. And yet, all you have to do is follow the fucking yeah, formula. Maybe, you look, it's just like it's no, we will find this a way to do it worse. Hieroglyphics on a tomb somewhere. We'll do it worse this for more money <laughs> and take not as long and we'll do fucking it worse for more money and more time, and it'll suck. In all seriousness, it's the laziness of Hollywood. Most people are lazy there. Oh, they they, they, they try they to find the fucking quickest way to do a lot of this shit, but funnily yep. enough, it'll often be the like they'll they'll be stopped burning money real fast, right? Like that's that's well, the story of the MCU. And you also got have guys who are just complete bullshit artists who take on stuff that's way above uh, their talent levels, so it looks good on the resume. They're not going to turn it then, down if some idiot goes up to two guys who had written a third of a shitty script and says, "Here's a TV series with all the money in the world." They're not going to say no. And you often forget as well that most people in Hollywood is a very sad amount that don't care at all for the creative process uh, for the money. Ah, oh, jeez. Pissing your homies on the forehead goodbye. Bring it back. I think this as well is the first fantasy movie to win an Oscar for Best Picture. Yeah, which I guess isn't surprising. But it's um, also so important. It's super um, important in terms of demonstrating the legitimacy of other genres that are not conventionally considered good enough, essentially, for these kinds of awards. And then absolutely no other movie came anywhere close to being this. It's a pretty high bar, though. Well, yeah, I'm I mean, not expecting the same level of quality. I'm just saying, like, can we even try to get a little <laughs> can bit Can we close? try? Morbius. Okay, I'll give you that one. Morbius yeah. is extreme. Whenever I say, you know, the best of anything, like I'm obviously including Morbius as like a, we don't need to mention it. Am I yeah, the only one in this call saying. who actually saw Morbius? Bring it, dude. Morbius is in I our haven't hearts. seen Morbius, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. That, that one hasn't actually, seen it, nobody's seen it. That would actually probably be a really good EFAP movies for you guys. That movie is fucking yeah. hysterical. I always <laughs> thought it would be like a meh Lame. thing. But... No, no, no. It's really, really funny. <laughs> All right. Fair if, if you if, like, I watched it. We should be talking about Morbius on this fucking part of the no, film. But get back to what <laughs> you said, Mahler. We're talking about Morbius here. Just in my lifetime, it was like after watching Star Wars lose, Raiders of the Lost Ark lose, all these like you know ET lose. Like none of these films got ET lost. Really, uh, ET did not win Best Picture. Raiders of the Lost Ark did not oh, win Best Picture. Oh, Empire wasn't even nominated. Yeah, Star was, Wars just doesn't get nominated yeah. or win these time, kind of awards. It's so if you want to use the term loosely genre, I guess maybe Silence of the Lambs kind of a horror movie. That's kind of genre. Yeah, this is they'd first... be like a thriller as well, probably. Yeah, you know? this is the first real genre film, modern genre film. I'm not going back into the 20s or 30s that that won. That should have so won. Lame, that kind of bias again. Should have won three years in a row. Well, no, it feels like the other two would have helped this one gain that like, win. I that can it's fine. Like, come this, on, like... give us the awards that yeah, we like, deserve. You know, had this come out like so to speak on its own like without the it's culturally speaking people were fucking talking about this this was not avoidable yeah. and that has to be accounted in what was once a legitimate academy awards which are a joke now dark knight should have won star wars should have won raiders of lost ark should have won et should have won you can make an argument uh for I, this might be controversial to some people spider-man too could have made an argument to that at least superman should have been nominated because they were critically acclaimed and immensely popular i i don't know what else you need oh a bunch of slow english dudes Dude's running to Van Gallus music. <laughs> that's it. That's the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended. A beautiful, incredible, incredibly difficult to defeat trilogy of quality that uh, stands the test of time, more than likely always will. Inspirational, fucking incredibly created. My god, the writing, the effects, the performances, the production design, editing, cinematography. Costumes. Soundtrack. Everything. It's the greatest film trilogy ever made. Took a lot of work from a lot of passionate people, and it's forever going to be remembered 
all those reasons. You're sad when it's over. You feel lost because you're like, oh, I'm not going to see it for the first time again. But I remember going into this movie going, ah, it's, this is, it's ending and I don't want it to end. What do you even do now? Like, it's over. And it's just, what do you do? So like we said before, <sighs> we figured it out. We nailed it. We got it. It's only down from here. <laughs> like, oh. Seriously, this film has some of the best special features ever committed to a DVD or a Blu-ray. Yeah. Like, they not only not made the hard. greatest movies, they recorded the entire process and process like painful detail, all of it. You know, and it's and that, uh, that reunited apart video that, uh, they did during the pandemic. Uh, John Reese Davies said something that I agree with that, uh, I think you'll learn more about the process of making films from watching those special features than you will from like going to a university to agreed uh, learn about it. As is often the case. Well, remember Chris Stuckman so said that uh, he learned how difficult it is to make films from having been on a set. He didn't know that that it takes effort before he went to a set himself for some reason really he thought what did he that's think? what he said so like i, I, I magic obviously happened. all of us sort of gathered it from any behind the scenes but a lot of people can gather it from watching a film you can kind of see all of the shit that goes into him that's incredible and difficult and the well, lord of the rings the directors go through every director like balloons in weight or loses all their hair or it, it's it's crazy stressful as hell yeah. You juggle everything. You don't know that things are going to work. You have to behave as though they will. You have to keep everyone going. And um, yeah, what, what's so endearing about the behind the scenes for Lord of the Rings is just how much everyone seems to be on the same page. You know, we know what the fuck we're doing and they're working hard and uh, the passion of it as well. I'm pretty sure like every time you hit the um, the final scene for any character, like the the entire cast are like tearing up knowing that the, they won't be seeing them again. Meanwhile, I don't know if you remember, but it was like a, a viral thing of the guy who was filming his last scenes is getting killed as Admiral Akbar, and then they were just like, "Okay, you could leave now." He was like, "Yeah, I could just, I'll just." Yeah, uh, I'll just yeah go. that's just it. See ya and bye. It's remarkable that these films exist and that they are as great as as they are. In a certain sense, from a timeline perspective, we got lucky. But then that's the thing: it wasn't luck; it was hard work and dedication and passion. Oh, and you can do nothing but hope that. Um... You know, future generations would learn from it and create more. We want to see more yeah, stories. Yeah, be inspired by it. It really is like an easy thing to point to. Of you want to introduce <laughs> introduce somebody to, and then set very very high expectations for films as a thing that you get to partake in as a human being. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is pretty quintessential. It's got action. It's got romance. It's got comedy. It's epic. A bit of horror. A bit of yeah, horror as well. Bit, it's, it's actually quite astounding, a bit of horror. Astoundingly well balanced. And incredibly inspirational. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. 100%. So many amazing characters, so many great arcs. Thematically, it's incredibly poignant and meaningful and universal as well. It's a yeah. very universal story, hence why I think it's an easy one to recommend. It's like, here, th this, is, this is storytelling. This is this thing that we like to do as people. What else can you say? <laughs> I mean, yep. if you do uh, it, yeah. you one amazing task. Not to say it was easy, but here we are, 20 plus years after it was all, you know, shot, put together. And we're still watching it, still loving it. It's still super iconic. It's still incredibly popular. It just, it's always it, there. Yeah, it speaks for itself as a creation, stands the test of time. In another 20 years, people will still be watching and talking about how much they love these movies. Everything, we certainly yeah, so will much be. nowadays feels so disposable and like it's just trying to get the butts and seats for the first couple weekends. And then after that, well, it's done its job, whatever. <laughs> and that's kind of the irony of it, right? Like the if they were to take the time to make something like this, they could make a hell of a lot of money. Even if you you thought it was unreliable it's like you might as well make something good while you're at it <laughs> yeah. you know if your goal is just to make money might as well make something good well on that note i hope you all enjoyed that uh very happy that we were able to pull it together and uh hey you know what make sure you watch lord of the rings at least once per year the extended editions That's, once per uh, year once per week your moral obligation will keep you keep you sane too what do you say after all that after all what we've been through Thank wow. you so much, everybody. Stay. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you Goodbye, for joining everyone. us on this adventure. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you later. See you later. Farewell. Goodbye.